Welcome back to the Action Bible Audio Companion and Narration by M.C. Brown, Part 43. And as always, we are reading from the Action Bible, God's Redemptive Story, the graphic novel adaption of the Bible itself. And it is with illustrations by Sergio Carrillo, General Editor Doug Maus, with text by David C. Cook, 2010, copyright. And as always, we're not trying to step on their toes or... Uh, give away panel by panel where you can read and we're hoping uh that either the regular or deluxe version um both found in the description you can read along and this inspires you to get your own action bible and uh read along with us and or listen along uh however it is and if god puts it on your heart to share this video with someone who needs it and may not be able to get one right away then uh by all means uh we finished the old testament we're into the new testament uh appreciate anybody's uh corrections i know uh from Greg, we, <clears throat> one of our reader or listeners, I think he was uh, telling me a few of the corrections, like it was Boaz, not Boaz. I think I may have been calling uh, one of the uh, numerous, a lot of numerous ones, um, but uh, I think not as numerous as I was thinking, butchering a lot of names. But um, so yeah, by all means, if it's uh, someone I know reaching out or just anybody in the comments, by all means, feel free to. Correct me if I butchered a name or mispronounced it pretty bad. I appreciate anything and uh, that I can do the next time in case I am able to get a hold of some of the deluxe chapters and narrate them. I, I will by all means uh, make any necessary corrections. I appreciate you guys and love you guys for uh, following along and and uh, on this journey that uh, blessed and thankful to be able to do and just uh, yeah God God has put it on my heart to do this and I just appreciate anybody who's can get anything out of these and and just relive the stories or uh truncated stories obviously i know in a lot of cases there's uh much more in the prose bible to do so if there's a story that piques your interest hopefully just even by this it helps you to just dive right back in or read uh the full prose bible because there's going to be some things that will not be included in this obviously but um especially in like in this case uh new testament is much shorter and and, and a lot of them are combined from different books of uh the gospel so uh, without further ado, I won't waste any more time. In every description is also a timestamp, so you can skip any of these intros if they get a little too uh, long-winded, like sometimes I can be. Uh, but you can always skip them, go right to the timestamp, which uh, I do every video. And uh, without further ado, we are on page 552, <coughs> 552, excuse me, resuming <coughs> with uh, on part 43, The Wedding Saver, based on John 2, 1 through 13, 23 through 25. In Cana, Jesus attends a wedding feast. His mother and disciples are there too. For days, the celebration is loud and joyous, but then they run out of wine. Before the guests can notice, Mary turns to her son to fix the problem. And before Jesus can say no, Mary instructs the servants, Do whatever Jesus tells you to do. Fill these jars with water. What good is water? We need more wine. Then Jesus orders the servants to pour some for their head waiter to taste. Confused, they obey. Wait, this is terrific. The best wine of the whole party. They did this party right. Usually people serve the best wine first, but they saved the best for last. The miracle is the first sign of Jesus' power, and his new disciples eagerly put their faith in him. When the wedding is over, they go with Jesus to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. As Jesus walks through the busy streets, he heals the lame and sick. I can walk. Praise God. Jesus healed me. Because of Jesus' miracles, people begin to wonder if Jesus is the Messiah, the deliverer God promised to send. News of Jesus' miracles spread even to important Jewish leaders. Born twice? Based on John 3. Nicodemus, a judge of the Jewish Supreme Court, has some questions for this miracle worker. And he wants to ask them pri and he wants to ask them privately. Is Jesus the Savior who will overthrow the Romans? What does a person have to do to enter God's kingdom? So one night he secretly goes to where Jesus is staying. But before he can even ask his question, Jesus speaks. No one can enter God's kingdom without being born again. That's impossible. How can I be born again when I am already so old? You were born once from human parents. Now you must be born again by God's Spirit. Then you can live in His kingdom. I don't understand. 
You can't see the wind, but you can see what it does. You can't see the Spirit of God, but you can tell by the way people live if they were, have been born again. You'll see from their lives if they have the Spirit of God in their hearts. Just like Moses lifted up a bronze snake in the desert, the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone may live forever. Don't you see? God loves the world so much that he sent me. Anyone who believes in me will never die. I have come to save the world. Nicodemus goes back out into the night with more questions than he started with. Jesus and his disciples leave Jerusalem and, uh, and go out into the countryside of Judea. There he tells people about God's kingdom and how they can enter it. Soon people come from all over Judea to be baptized. Some of John the Baptist's disciples are jealous. Everyone is listening to Jesus now. He's becoming more popular than you. That's the way it should be. Jesus must become more important and I must become less. Living Water, based on John 4, Luke 4, 14 through 28. Jesus, <clears throat> Jesus decided to go from Judea to Galilee. On the way, he passes through Samaria. As he and his, and his disciples approach a well, Jesus sits down to rest. His disciples go into town to find food. I hope none of those Samaritans causes any trouble. Will you give me a drink? He's a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan. Doesn't he know he is not supposed to talk to me? Jews and Samaritans have been bitter enemies for more than 500 years. When Jesus asks a Samaritan woman for a drink of water, she is shocked. I'm a Samaritan, and you are a Jew. Are you asking me for a drink? If you knew who I am, you would ask me to give you living water. You don't even have anything to get water with, and the well is deep. If you drink water from this well, you will be thirsty later. But if you drink the water I give, you will never thirst again. The water I give is God's eternal life. I don't understand, but when the Messiah comes, he will explain everything. I am he. When Jesus tells her that he is the Savior from God, she believes him and runs to town to tell the good news. Come, see a man who has told me things about my life that no stranger could know. He's the Savior God promised to send. While the woman is in town, Jesus' disciples return with food for him to eat. Thank you, but not now. I have food to eat that you don't know anything about. So we went into town for nothing? My food is to do what God sent me to do. I am fed by finishing God's work. Although Samaritans hate Jews, many of them believe in Jesus, in Jesus because of what the woman tells them. They ask Jesus to stay and teach them about God. He stays two days and then goes to Galilee. On the Sabbath, in his hometown of Nazareth, Jesus goes to the synagogue. He reads from the book of Isaiah, which tells about the coming of the Messiah, the Savior God promised to send. Today this passage has come true. You... You, the Messiah, you're just the son of Joseph the carpenter. What I'm telling you is true, but you won't listen because you think you know who I am. Kill him! Run him out of town! The crowd rejects Jesus and chases him out of the synagogue. They want to throw him off a cliff at the edge of town, but Jesus calmly walks right through the crowd and goes on his way. Up on, a, on the Roof, based on Mark 2, 1 through 12. Jesus continues healing people, even those struck with leprosy. As a result, everywhere Jesus goes, crowds follow him, hoping to see more miracles. One day, in Capernaum, so many people pack into a house that no one else can squeeze in. Four men bring their crippled friend to see Jesus. He is paralyzed and can't walk. When they can't get in through the the door they go up to the roof what are you doing making a hole so jesus can see you so you can see jesus the friend's work pays off they lower their paralyzed friend through the roof right in front of jesus jesus sees their faith and knows what the man really needs your sins are forgiven 
the people are amazed, but some of the leaders, the Pharisees, are angry at what Jesus says. How can he say such lies? Only God can forgive sin. Jesus knows what the Pharisees are thinking. Which is harder to do? Forgive a man's sins or heal a man's legs? To prove I have the authority to forgive sins, I will also heal this man's legs. Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. The paralyzed man picks up his mat and walks out. Everyone can see him. My sins are forgiven. I'm healed. Praise God. I've never seen anything like this. It's amazing. Jesus leaves the house, but as he passes by the toll house at the city gate, You tax collectors are all robbers. I can't pay that much tax, and you know it. You better pay it. I can have the Romans throw you in jail if you don't. Dinner with Sinners, based on Matthew 9, 9 through 13, 12, 9 through 14. The Jews hate the tax collectors. Although they are also Jews, tax collectors work for the Romans, and they cheat their fellow Jews out of money. But Jesus doesn't care what the people think. He loves even the tax collectors. One day in Capernaum, Jesus looks into the eyes of a hated tax collector. Matthew, come and follow me. Immediately, Matthew gives up his prosperous but corrupt job and follows Jesus. No good Jew ever wanted Matthew for a friend. Matthew throws a dinner party to honor Jesus. Other tax collectors come to dinner, too. The Pharisees see, seeth, the Pharisees seethe with disapproval. Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and other sinners? People who are healthy don't need a doctor. Sick people do. The sinners are the ones who need me. The Pharisees don't know what to say, but they get even angrier at Jesus and start looking for ways to criticize him in front of the people. One Sabbath day in the synagogue, Look, Jesus is talking to that man with <coughs> twisted hand. Let's see if we can trick him into breaking the law. Let's see if we can trick him into breaking God's law. Does the law allow us to heal on the Sabbath? If one of your sheep falls into a pit on the Sabbath, wouldn't you lift it out? A person is more valuable than a sheep. Yes, the law allows us to do good on the Sabbath. Then, in front of all the Pharisees, stretch out your hand. My hand? It's as good as new. It's just as good as the other hand. The Pharisees are angry because Jesus is breaking their rules. They're too stubborn to notice he is doing God's work. And so they start plotting against him. We have to find a way to kill that man. You're right. This is going to take some planning. All right. So we'll stop here. Just finish up page 565. And that'll wrap it up here for... Uh, part 43 here. So, yes... As you can tell as we continue Jesus' story, amazing, amazing, powerful words and deeds by our Lord and Savior. Just want to thank you guys for uh, following along. And uh, if God puts it on your heart, please like this video, share this video to someone you know who needs it. Like, uh, hit subscribe, and notification bell if it's on your heart to do that. I appreciate it. Um, and yeah, and just may God bless you, keep you safe um, as we're early on coming uh days of this month for sure uh we started this journey on uh christmas day 2021 as we read this it's uh into the second week of january so 2022 so love you guys appreciate you guys uh stay safe out there and uh we'll see you in the next one